Dr. Barone and Number Twelve. Are they not going to join? I'm not sure they didn't say anything. All right. Well, we'll just start. All right. So it is 11:30 a.m. We're going to get this meeting started. Um, we're currently having a little bit of trouble um, adjusting the camera, so we'll get that fixed soon. Um, so we'll just go ahead and start with attendance. Uh, I'll start it off. Uh, Alejandro Casillas, present. Haley Glass, present. Levi Chi, present. Siobhan McKinney, present. Amelia Federico, present. Susana Villa Gomez, present. Victor Delgado, present. Matthew Rathbun, present. Present. Attendance. Michael, present. Was it? We need to the, the to just the cameras. Well, we're doing attendance, if you want to. I mean, I'm doing attendance. You're the last one to go, so. <clears throat> William Coates present. And who would like to start off with reading the mission statement? Go ahead, Matt. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you. Um, public comment is scheduled to be at 1135, but since we already finished with the mission statement and the attendance, we can go ahead and start with public comment. Um, you, you're not coming for public comment? Okay, cool. And then if there's anyone in the chat, please make yourself known. Cool. Well, going back to new business, we're going to be doing the voting of the committee chairs. So what is accountability? Accountability first. So we're going to start off with accountability chair. Um, Will, do you still hold your uh, acceptance for the accountability chair? I do. And Levi? I do. Okay. Well, then we'll start off. <laughs> we'll start off with Will with his um, speech first. Yeah. And then Levi will call you whenever he's finished. So we're going to be giving you two minutes max to give your speech and then another two minutes for questions. So whenever you're ready. Want me to? Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I come before you today to request, uh, humbly request that you cast your vote for me for the accountability chair, because I do believe that I am the best person for that currently. And the reason for that is uh, last year, I worked closely with the last accountability chair um, with uh, amending and working through the constitution and trying to improve it and bringing those amendments to uh, last year's uh, TSAC iteration, which many of those amendments were passed. So I do have some experience around that uh, committee. With that, I am familiar with the Constitution, although being frank, I don't know every single word from it, but I do know where to find everything, you know, um, if there does arise an issue in the future. Um, I would go first through restorative justice practices. Um, instead of just trying to punish, I don't believe that is the first resort into bringing accountability for people. I do believe that restorative justice is the first way through. 
Um, I, by doing that, I bring the affected sides to the table and working towards a common solution that all parties participate in, while also collaborating with Elise. Um, Elise is the Assistant Director of Restorative Justice and Student Conflict Resolution. So bringing her expertise into that would be um, very helpful in handling any potential issues in the future. With that, there'd be collaboration through positive engagement with TSAC members. So I would hear everyone's input on an issue and the rest of the accountability committee and the presiding advisors, Dr. Barone, Asivan, and Armando. Well, I'm sorry, but that's time. Okay. And we're gonna start off with giving two minutes of questions. Michael, you can go ahead and start. I would love, thank you so much. So this is a, a committee that's seen a lot of change over the years. Um, and I think one of the things that struggle to tackle is uh, productivity. So some counselors do a whole lot of work and some do zero work. How are you planning to combat that and kind of make sure everyone's equally putting in some work and for the students? That's a great question. Um, first off, I'd like to talk to whoever these uh, counselors are, you know, sit down with them one on one, try to figure out, you know, what's going on in their life, because sometimes there's a lot of things. We're all very busy people. Right. We have a lot of things going on. So I'd like to first understand what's going on in that person's life and try to reach a solution to improve their productivity towards the council and therefore their um, overall productivity towards the students um, benefit. Victor. Oh. How would you take bias out of the accountability committee and how would you stick to the constitution? So when handling bias um, with my prior experience also um, last year and in the military, um, a lot of times there's situations where they're emotionally charged, right? You can't always control how something affects you emotionally, but me, myself, uh, I've trained myself to look at how I feel about something and then realize the overall situation in regards to how those emotions might affect whatever is going on during, um, during that accountability meeting and keeping those emotions to the side. Because I do wholeheartedly believe that bias is um, especially an accountability committee is not a good thing. And I would have the advisors, you guys have your input as well, and the other um, people on that committee. So there'd be a lot of checks too. Um, but me, myself, I, I wouldn't allow my personal biases to get in the way of doing things to restorative justice practices. And, you know, with you know the approval of the council and the advisors and everyone and Elise especially because she has so much uh, experience in that uh, well, she would help so direct me a little over two minutes already control so. of bias thank you yeah um yeah and that sums up for all the questions so if you can please step out and call levi in for us and since will when a uh, over the two minute mark, we'll give Levi the same amount of time to answer questions. For future reference on the timing, I'll try and give you guys hand signals when you have like one minute left, 30 seconds left, just so you guys can kind of keep that in mind. Um, Levi, you're going to have just over two minutes for your part of the speech. And then for questioning, uh, Will went over by about 30 seconds. So we're going to give you two minutes and 30 seconds, but I will try and give you hand cues just so you can kind of keep an eye on the time. Is there any difference?
That's good. We'll be right behind Victor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm speaking with you again today to advocate for uh, why I should be the chair for the accountability committee. As you know, uh, when we all chose the three words that uh, represent us the most regarding our position as leaders of the student uh, student leaders of MSU, uh, accountability was not just a uh, a value I hold. It's a principle I live by and believe in. It's one of the values I chose of the three words that we had. I believe that those that represent us and inspired to do so should be held accountable for their actions. If elected as the chair of the accountability committee, uh, that belief was the cornerstone, cornerstone of my leadership. As you all witnessed when we all had a COBOL assessment, uh, my way of working with people is to be the silent observer. While working with others, I observe the problem and think of the best way to bridge a solution together. Being the chair of the accountability committee just takes more than the ability of uh, holding people to their word. You need to observe the situation, hear every viewpoint, and work it all out with everybody. You need to observe, ensure a team works together and that they work towards the team's goal while acknowledging their differences. My goal is to help us be the best leaders of the people we represent, which, may, which means looking past our personal mission and looking for what we uh, can do together. Our team could do wonderful things together if we keep each other accountable. And so say the saying comes, steel, steel sharpens steel, which is why I should be the chair of the account accountability committee. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and give you two minutes and 30 seconds for questions. Who wants to start off? Mike? <clears throat> Levi, um, talk to me about how you make decisions. What goes through your mind when you're, you have to make a tough decision? Uh, as like a team or in a situation. So I always feel that when it comes to a situation like between us or other people, when it comes to uh, deciding something, um, this especially is like where we have to be the most cautious with our decisions as student leaders. And I feel that being slow and taking all the facts and really observing the situation and trying to make the best outcome rather than something hasty and immediately decisive is the best way to go. Anybody else have any other questions? Victor? So you're going to want to be the head of the accountability committee. How would you um, how would you remove bias from the decisions in the accountability? And how would you stick to the rules or the constitution that we have set in place? I think uh, one of the best ways to try to mitigate when bias when it comes to these situations is trying to maintain that uh, degree of professionalism when it comes to us being student leaders. And also um, also removing yourself from the situation when it comes to being involved to a greater process. I mean, we're student leaders over to MSU and everything. Our uh, uh, mission uh, statement that we read every day is to serve the students of this institution. And I believe moving forward to make the best decision for them and not for you or your buddies or for people you know would be the way forward. We still have a minute left in questions. Does anybody have any questions? I have a clarifying question. Don't the questions have to remain the same across both candidates? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say That's what it happened last time for chair. So I didn't know if that was the same for committee chair. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm so. Made up a bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know if that was like a standing rule. <laughs> Cool. Well, then, if nobody has any other questions, then you can go ahead and step out, and then we'll call you in whenever we're ready to vote. They still get to vote, right? I mean, you got to step back in and vote for the chair. Is he doing it in the team's shop? Yeah. Or are we doing it? I wasn't in here for like the deliberation part. Is there like, did you guys like just like thank yourselves or did we discuss as a group for like deliberating before we had them come back in for voting? Yeah, we Deliberate as a group, okay. So, so let's get this thing going because we are limited on time. So who would like to start off with, yeah.
Um, I think either one of them would be decent for the job. I think um, Levi has a lot of passion and consideration, and I think Will has a lot of experience. So I think it's a, I mean, I think they both are great people for this job. Um, I would suggest whoever isn't elected be on that committee anyway, because um, it's a pretty much, it's a three person committee where the chair kind of just leads it. So I don't know, it's up to y'all. It can be either way. No, I definitely agree. Um, I do think Will does have the experience because he did help re um, edit the constitution last year. And then again, how you said Levi does seem pretty passionate. So he does seem pretty passionate, but me personally, I feel like we should look for somebody who has that experience so they know exactly what they're doing. I'm not saying Levi doesn't know what he's doing, but I feel like Will would have more of a better sense of direction as to how to go about a certain way. Nothing else from anybody? No. Cool. Yes. Oh. thing that I just want to remind people of is, um, especially when Levi ran for chair, he mentioned that um, his capacity this semester is pretty, pretty flexible um, because he is not working this semester. And I think that's something important to consider, especially when you have committee responsibilities like being the chair. I don't quite know what Will's um, capacity looks like, which is that something I should have asked, but didn't, and that's on me. Um, but I know that Levi, he has said that he doesn't have a job right now, which I think puts him in a place to um, almost become an expert of that committee, right? Because I do hear you when you say that, you know, Will would come in with the experience of, oh, I've, you know, I've been on the council before, you know, I've already, um, I'm familiar with these process, but I think what's beautiful about shared leadership environment is supporting other people to to grow as well not to say that will couldn't grow if he was also if he was elected chair um but i think thinking about capacity and thinking about leadership growth um that's just something i wanted to name anyone else before we call them in cool let me go ahead matt we'll go ahead and call them in All right, so we have gotten all of our votes in, and we're going to say congratulations to Will. You are now the accountability chair for this year. Moving on to the PR committee. So, Siobhan, do you still accept your nomination for PR committee? And Susanna? Cool. So then we'll go ahead and start with Siobhan um, giving her speech first. And so, Sandra, if you can please step out and we'll call you in whenever we're, we're ready.
Go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Hello. Oh, stand on. Right here? That's good? Oh. Hello, everyone. I'm Siobhan, and I think that I'm, I am the right and the best person for the um, PR committee because I do have an extensive um, following on all social media platforms and I'm running two stores also. So I'm an independent um, graphic designer and also my values. I believe in having integrity and understanding and a commitment to maintaining quality communications between our, our organization and the public. And I believe that I, I am a very honest person, and you and if you check on um if you if y'all check on any of my my um social media platforms, you will see that I spread motivational and inspirational things that motivates and inspire people to become better. And so, and nothing is nothing that I that I put is of anything um. Bias, so I'm not a I'm not a biased person. I try my best to remain as neutral as I as I can, you know, and spread just spread a, a honesty towards everyone. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Thank and we'll go ahead and start with the two minute and thirty second questions. Um, anybody want to start off first? One question that I have, first of all, thank you so much. Um, very excited. And one question that I have for you that I will be now asking everybody for committees is what capacity looks like, what personal capacity looks like. Um, and I think the school week can be very busy um, mm -hmm. for a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. And so just wanted to hear either you can share this or you can internally reflect as if you have the proper capacity to be taking on the role of a chair. And again, you don't have to share, but it's just a question I like to pose for people to think and reflect about. Yes, I would like to share. Oh, he popped up. Oh, yeah, no, I pop up. They'll know I'm on here. I, I peek in every once in a while. I've done that since I quit because I'm that fucking. Hi, nice, Senna, we can hear you. Yes, um, so um, if you, for those who do not know me, my life is based on being productive on campus. I really love school. So I made it my business this semester since I um, won my um, seat. So my, my dedication is for student government. So I, I believe I do have, yes, I do have the past the capacity. Yes, Michael. Yeah. Hello, thank you so much. Um, I'm curious because we've done this in the past. The PR committee is a huge committee. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I mean, it takes a lot. I would say it takes probably a team, good team of three or four to kind of really function it well. Okay. What, what were your thoughts of you and Susanna work together, like co chairing this committee? Oh, I am a great team member. <laughs> so, yes, I, I don't have a problem. Because you can't, um, a team has doesn't have me in it, mm -hmm. and I believe in collaborating and networking with everyone and getting along with everyone to make the goal work. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Um, yes. So with PR committee, it's not just uh, you know handling the Instagram for student government, but it's also. Uh, planning events for student government. How much experience do you have with like um, event planning? Well, I may not have event planning skills right now, but I am so acquainted and well known around campus with all the um, with a lot of faculties. So if I have a problem or need help, I can always find someone that can help me in reaching that goal of event planning. 
Mm -hmm. And we're at the two minute mark. Uh, we've got 30 seconds left in case anybody else wants to ask a question. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Siobhan. If you thank can you. please bring in Susana. Susanna, if you can please uh, scoot over a little bit so we can see you on the camera as well. And then we're going to go ahead and give you two minutes for your speech and then two minutes and 30 seconds for questions. And go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Hi, as you may know, I'm Susanna Villa Gomez. Um, I feel like the reason why I should be elected in the PL committee, not only that, because in my own organization, I do help marketing chair. So that does come a lot with a lot of deadlines, a lot of approvals, and not only that, PR committee should also work with the other committees to see what we want to post online on social media or what we want to be, or how we want to be transparent with the students. I feel like that's one of my main goals as PR because for the past two years at MSU, I feel like the student government been lacking in being transparent with, stu with students and not being able to be as informative with students and I, that's something that I do want to see improvement on and not only working with me it's also working with everyone in the council to see how we could provide that with students and yeah that's all <laughs> and the two minute and 30 seconds for questions starts now who would like to start will Love the speech, thank you. Um, how do you see yourself improving the PR committee, um, whether it be like some kind of larger plan or bigger picture that you're trying to implement or just a specific example of what that would look like? At the moment, I only thought of making an outline of how it should look like, and I feel like it should be approved by everyone, not just by the PR committee, because I do have biased opinions on how I like to um, market certain things, but like having everyone opinions on certain things will be helpful because like we'll be able to like make an outline. When is this going to be open with students? When is not going to be open with students? What should we be transparent about or what should we not be? Um, I have a question. So the peer community is a team effort. It needs a lot of people to be a part of it. Um, how would you feel about if you and Siobhan kind of co-chaired that committee, taking on a kind of equal amount of work on that committee? I personally wouldn't mind it at all because PR is a lot. It's a lot of working. It's a lot of creative thinking and it's a, it's a strategy plan because there are going to be occasions that we're going to have backlash and we're not going to know what we're going to say. I'm like, I have seen that uh, we haven't said anything and we're just standing there. So having someone else like opinion and my opinion will be helpful like to be able to create something like what's a statement we could like publicly post and not be just standing there. So working with Siobhan will be honestly really helpful with me. So if she doesn't mind it too. And we have 30 seconds left. Anybody else have a question? Just want to ask about capacity trying to keep this question consistent is <laughs> i'm i care about it um just either thinking for yourself or reflecting out loud um what does your capacity look like this summer i know you're a very busy person you got classes you have things happening outside of the classroom um there's only you have the capacity for this committee um my capacity is open at the moment i am really busy this semester but I am at school almost Monday to Friday, so I feel like I have no excuses on that. <laughs> That's just how I see things. If I don't have an excuse, I have to do it, so. <laughs> Thank you, Susanna. I'm gonna cut you off right there. 
uh, go ahead and step on and we'll call you in whenever we're ready. You giggling makes us giggle. I would like to make a motion. Um, so I think these two would be great for the committee. I think co-chairs this committee actually makes a little more sense. Um, they seem open to working to with each other. I think having two people on this committee is better than having just like maybe one or since. I would like to motion that we suspend this vote and just appoint uh, them both as co-chairs of the committee. I second that. Very nice. Um, any abs any abstentions? Objections. Any rejections? Objections. I have one. Um, I think they if Siobhan or or uh, Susanna, whoever gets elected, if they get elected in, you know, after this vote, um, they can like if they're really passionate, they could still be in the same committee. Um, I think this is just like a title thing at this point and not so much. A, I don't really see the need for it personally, but that's my opinion. Matt? As the, <clears throat> sorry, as the previous PR chair, I would be more in support of this because um, it does also sound like they have different skill sets. Um, they could really complement each other because um, it sounds like Susanna might have more experience with events. And Siobhan has apparently a lot of experience with social media as well. And working at more solo last year was really difficult. Point of clarification. So, Will, are you uh, putting an objection vote in this and we have to do a roll call vote? Is that what you're doing? I am sort of right. doing that. Well then, we have a clarifying question that I do have is it would it be a both co-chair or would it be like a chair and then a co-chair? Um, Just both co-chair. Oh, okay. Um, I am in favor of this because again, I think developing people's leadership within the council is really important in different ways. Even if it's just a name thing. All right. Well then we're going to go or Victor. Are we going to going to keep that same thing throughout the rest of the committees then? Are we going to have two co-chairs? This motion. Are we, it's just for this one itself. Yeah. This motion was just for this committee. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then, should we do what is roll call? Well, the motion's been seconded. Now you need to do roll call because he objected to it. All right. So then we'll go ahead and start off with the roll call voting. Start off with Amelia. I vote in favor of this motion. Mike. Yes. Will? Nay. Victor? Nay. Matt? Yes. Uh, for myself, yes. Yes. Haley. And then Haley. Levi? Uh, I vote in favor. That's majority. That's majority. Yeah. So that's majority. So we've come to the conclusion of having both Susanna and Siobhan as co chair for PR committee. Somebody can go ahead and please bring them in. Oh. I just have a, a clarification question. Are you all doing majority now or two thirds? Oh, it's two, right. But I just mean to be consistent. Like, are you all just using majority or two thirds? I remember last year you did two thirds. Yeah, I think we're going to keep it two thirds, but my okay. wording was a little off right there. So I just want to make sure because yeah. I, it's fine. I just want to make sure whatever you do, try to keep it consistent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for the PR committee, um, we as a council have decided to put both Siobhan and Susanna as co-chair for PR committee. Um, this, of course, have we have mentioned, this is kind of difficult and heavy on one individual person. And we believe that both of y'all working together would do great things. So congratulations. <laughs> All right, moving on to the sustainability chair. Haley, would you still like to accept your nomination? No, I would not. Cool. Victor, would you still like to accept your nomination? Yes. Cool. Would you like to give a speech? Yeah. Yeah. 
believe we still okay. Hello, um, my name is Victor Delgado. I um, am here as one of you guys' council members, um, and I'm here trying to be the chair for the Sustainability Committee. Um, I have a bit of experience with sustainability in the sense of um, what it takes to actually implement some of these projects. I've worked with administration to be able to um, try to make some sustainability projects here on campus. I um, have experience in environmental science through my classes that I've taken. Um, but also, of course, like you guys said, some of these committees are a little um, too much to handle on your own. So I was going to work with Haley to be able to work on some of her projects and some of her sustainability projects, which doesn't always require it to be a environmentally friendly sustainability. It can be how we can make the students experience here um, on campus better, as well as um, make it a more enjoyable experience for them to be here. And that also requires a lot of uh, sustainability practices and um, being able to um, come from a place where um, students are able to be as supported as possible. And I think as a, as a chair of the sustainability committee and um, not that my position as SACAP member would also help me in this because I would be in the meetings where the projects are uh, a larger Auraria campus and I would love to be the person to represent um, the institution there in those as a part of the sustainability committee. And then we're gonna go ahead and start the two minute and 30 second mark for questions. Who would like to start? Matt, or sorry, Mike. Thank you. Hello, Victor. So I this is a conversation I had with Haley, but um, I didn't get I didn't get around to having a conversation with you. I think this committee could be bigger in its scope. I think sustainability is kind of like narrowing. I think we lack kind of a student outreach committee, kind of a student student sustainability committee, in my opinion. And I think I could very much so see this committee turning into that. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like I said in my speech earlier, I um, me and Haley had a quite a bit of a conversation talking about sustainable practices outside of environmental friendly sustainability and that would be um, being able to outreach to more students um, and that would require you know obviously collaboration but as well as um, a sense of what the students need um, and with we have our own experiences but of course we need more experiences and that would require us to be able to go into the community more and I think we should be able to do that as sustainability. Will, do you have a question? Just real quick. Um, thank you for the speech, Victor. Um, what is just an idea or an example of something you want to pursue, like something specific, big picture or small picture? Um, yeah. Some of the community spaces on campus aren't so um, friendly, you could say. Most of the students just go eat their dinner and then go back to class. So some of those spaces could be uh, evolved a little bit, you know, uh, give it a little bit more um, pizzazz, I guess you could say, for a funner term. Um, some of those, so students can come to campus, be able to, you know, hang out here, um, make a community here around those spaces. Um, I think that would be one of those kind of sustainability practices um, in terms of student support and outreach, but in terms of sustainability in an environmental sense, um, some of these buildings are kind of old. So being able to revamp that, the AC systems, the windows, some, you know, little, not little things, but things that are manageable to make these buildings more sustainable to reach these. Because also, if you guys didn't know that, oh. That's all the time that we have for questions. Sorry, Victor. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't necessarily have anything to debate. But if anybody has anything, yeah. I just have a clarifying question. Um, would anybody like to still 
on for a sustainability committee. Part of my stepping down for taking the chair position of this is because I, I didn't think it was going to be in my capacity to take on the co-chair position as well as the sustainability chair. So I had multiple conversations with, um, well, not multiple, but I had a solid conversation with Victor about his capacity um, and his want to take over the sustainability chair. And part of that conversation was including a partnership where I was still able to assist him and Mike was still able to assist him in restructuring the sustainability committee so that we can make those changes that we talked about at our trainings um, and in individual conversations that I had with Mike and individual conversations that I had with Victor. Um, so it's definitely something that I'd want to collaborate on. I just don't think in a sort of chair or co-chair position. Do you have something to say, Will? Just real quick. Um, ben. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just gonna ask for folks who, um, want a chair position but maybe don't have one yet i just wanted to open it up for folks who might be interested in that um that's all will so <clears throat> i don't see any reason why victor shouldn't be elected in i think he is great for this position um, he does bring with him his wanting of um, transportation, RTD specifically, which is, if you think about it, a sustainable practice instead of just driving our vehicles here on campus every day. Um, so I think a lot of his personal goals still really do align with uh, sustainability practices. I agree with you, Will. Um, is there anything else that anybody would like to comment? No. Well, there isn't really much of a voting here, but I guess we can create a poll. Yes or no? Oh, well, yeah. All in favor for Victor being the sustainability chair? Aye. 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 Any projections? Any abstentions? And then we'll go ahead and bring Victor in. Thank you, Victor, for that speech. Um, we would like to congratulate you on getting the sustainability chair. All right, moving on to University Policy Committee. Amelia, would you still like to accept your nomination? Absolutely. Awesome. Matt, would you still like to accept your nomination? Yes. And Levi, would you still like to accept your nomination? Yes. Cool. So then we'll go ahead and start with Amelia first. If Matt and Levi can please step out of the room. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, hello. Can I start? Beautiful. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, very excited to be talking with you today about why I want to run for chair of the University Policy Committee. I felt very honored when I um, was nominated uh, by a few of the council members for this position, and I really feel like I would be excellent as the chair of this uh, committee for university-wide policy. I have been a community organizer, as some of you know, since I was 15, I'm now 22, and I've been working in local, state, and federal policy for about seven years now. And it would bring me a lot of joy to bring that experience into the MSU Denver com community and um, to TSEC overall. That's part of the reason why I ran for student governments, to bring that experience, that lived experience with me here to cultivate change for the MSU Denver students. Um, I know policy is something that is a very a uh, long, complex process. Change does not happen overnight, or rather very quickly. Um, and that's something that I um, have experience with, and it's something that I have a lot of patience for. 
Um, and something else that I believe is an asset is the way that I understand problems and the way that I approach problems in a policy setting is trying to get creative about it, find creative solutions for complex problems. And I have a history of doing that on every level of government. And I really would love to do that here at MSU Denver. So I would appreciate your nomination for this committee chair position. Thank you. That sums up the speech time. We're going to go ahead and start the two minute and 30 seconds. Whoever would like to start. Um, what is, how do you, how do you phrase your question? Um, capacity. Do you have the capacity for this? <laughs> I was actually really hoping somebody was going to ask me that question because I've been asking it to everybody, obviously. Um, I do have capacity for this. Um, I am not currently working as much as I normally am. Normally I have three, four jobs um, and I'm also a full-time student. This semester is the first time where I'm working like 10 hours a week maximum um, while I'm taking four classes and one of them is like a one credit course. Um, so I do believe that I have capacity for this. Otherwise I wouldn't have run um, or I would have removed my name. That's actually why, ooh, that's actually why I removed my name from chair is because I didn't feel like I had the capacity for that. And so this is something that I've thought intentionally about for a long time. Thank you for the question, Mr. Coates. My Hello, Mr. Warner. Mr. Warner, thank you. Um, I have a question. Yes, say, please. Hypothetical. Say a controversial policy that's been in place for a while and is up for review. <laughs> what is your process for uh, making sure the students are heard in that policy in your decision making? So you're asking if the committee yes, wanted it, to yeah. reinstate. Say a policy is up for review or there's a new policy on the desk of y'all's committee. How would you go for uh, uh interpreting the will of the students in, in your advocacy? Yeah. Well, I try not to assume anything. I actually really enjoy information gathering. And so that can look like, um, I know I've talked with some of you about having student forms, which is something that I really believe in hearing directly from the students. Obviously, you know, not everybody will be able to be in that space, but I think attempting avenues for student engagement when you have something, a situation like that is really important. Um, something I've also done is um, the professors in the Chicano Studies Department who teach intro have said I can come in and tell them about student government because those are for, oftentimes intro classes are first year students or students who are just coming right back to campus. And so those class presentations is a really good touch point for students as well. So town halls and student present and class presentations for students are two ways that I would go about that. We only have about five seconds left for questions, so. Thank you, Amelia. If you can please call in Matt. And then for future references as well, if you guys are gonna ask questions, let's try to get straight to the question and not add like little comments or anything like that. Just get straight to the point because we're limited on time, so. All right, Matt, you're going to get two minutes to give your speech and go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Didn't realize there was a podium. Um, so my name is Matt Rathbone. I'm running for the University Policy Committee. Um, that's actually what I'm basically going to school for in social work is social policy. Um, so I've done a lot of times analyzing different policies and the data that goes into policy. I've been also at MSU probably a decade now. <laughs> um, so I've been around, met a lot of the people. I even know a couple people on the uh, committee at large outside of TSAC. Um, and I've also done investigations to find their web page and what kind of policies they're talking about. So I'm prepared for if I get the position to start. Thank you for your speech, Matt. And then we'll go ahead and start with Mike for questions. Very nice. Hello, Matt. So I have a hypothetical for you. Say Hi. a policy involving students comes to your committee. How would you go about uh, advocating for the students on that policy? 
I would probably work with our PR committee to make sure that we're getting student voice. Um, so whether that's me trying to create something to pass to them to help distribute, or if they create a system that creates that already, um, but making sure I'm reaching out to all the stakeholders to get what the actual needs and wants are in relation to said policy. Any other questions? Will? It's, uh, you're, thank you. Um, do you have the time for this? It's pretty much the essence of the last question I asked. I was waiting for that one. Um, so I am currently a part-time master's program. I did get, I do have an internship that's about 16 hours a week in SACAB. Um, if I do get this position, it'd probably be the last thing that I would sign up for as a chair of. Um, but in any extra time I have, I'd be totally willing to support other committees. Did that answer your question enough? All right. Thank you, Will, for that question. Anybody else have any other questions? We have one minute left. Cool. Well, thank you, Matt. Right. If you can please call in Levi. Okay. I set it up for you. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm speaking with you again to discuss uh, the TSAC representative who will be on the University Policy Committee. Is it advisory policy or is it policy? Um, let me fix on the agenda. Uh, anyways, the University Policy Committee is one of the most important committees for TSAC. Being able to sit on the meeting with various parties and that are involved with the campus and to see the policies that will affect both current and the future students is, incre is incredibly important. Understanding the motivations and priorities of the board and trustees, stakeholders, and the president's office is a significant undertaking. The role's responsibility is to understand and report the information for the meeting to others. This role requires someone who's able to understand, communicate, and collaborate. I have a lot of experience with both uh, this as a civilian and in the military. During my time in uh, student government down at my previous college I transferred from, I'd worked with donors and high level staff, and I worked the college president directly over events and meetings. In this regard, I have years worth of experience, and as a new member of TSAC, I won't have the previous assumptions about me attached to me, which is why you should lend this responsibility to me. And uh, thank you for your time. And then Mike, you can go ahead and start. All right. Hello, Levi. So say a, a policy, say you're on this committee and a policy involving students comes across the committee. How would you go about um, like discussing with the students, like working with students, making sure their voice is heard in your ad advocacy? So I feel with the policy, um, first, I think it would be specifically dependent. So the students, it would be like a priority system. You know, uh, the students I want to talk to specifically are the ones the most involved. Like, for example, I've had some new outreach thing involving like brother the brother. I want to talk to those student leaders first and then uh, talk to people who are uh, adjacent to them when it comes to responsibilities like that. And that's how we go about talking to students about the policies and working with the um, board. Any other questions? Will? Um, what is your time capacity for this uh, committee? So uh, as mentioned previously in our first meeting, but uh, to reiterate, um, besides, I mostly come up to Denver for the uh, office hours, but otherwise um, I just have school and that's it. I, I'm not work working a job and financially um, I'm available for all that stuff. So I have a lot of time on my hands this semester. Any other questions? We are, we have one minute left. No. Cool. Well, thank you, Levi. If you could please step out, we'll call you guys in when we're ready. Okay, so here's my thoughts. 
SACAB has a policy committee as well, and that's for AHEC specific policies. Um, so, and we have to differentiate between MSU and AHEC because those two are very separate. My suggestion would be for either Matt or, I mean, Victor, that's, this is going to be a SACAB question, to join that policy committee because the more controversial policies on this campus go through AHEC, not necessarily through MSU, in my opinion. Um, so I would I would think uh, Amelia or Levi are kind of the choices for that. And that's something like I would uh, mention to our SACAB representatives um, once we get, they have their first meeting. Uh, I definitely agree. I do think me and my personal, um, it seems like Amelia is really passionate about policy and it seems like she would have a good, she would have, be a, a good fit for this position. Um, Levi also does seem pretty passionate, but Amelia does seem to have a lot of experience when it comes to policy and knowing how to advocate for certain things. So, anybody else have anything? No? All right. Well, then I guess we can go ahead and start with the poll. The poll should be posted, so please, if everybody can go ahead and vote. All right, so the results are in. Uh, we would like to congratulate Amelia on receiving this committee chair. So moving on to the shared governance. Uh, Matt, would you still like to accept your nomination? Sure. Awesome. And Victor, would you still like to accept your nomination? No, okay. So that just leaves Matt. Would you like to give? Is there any other more self nominations? Yes, I'd like to nominate myself. I'd second that. Sweet. So then we'll go ahead and start with Matt first. Uh, if Levi, if you could please step out of the room. I was just looking at the agenda and I don't see the up back committee, which is the university budget committee is not on here. And I don't remember Alejandro was that were you the only person I just I kind of remember at the retreat. Yeah, that was something else that I was going to bring on to the table after we finished the voting of the committees that we didn't have single individual people running for. Um, there were quite a few committees that we had where yeah. it was only one person that was interested. As a new member on the council, I'm not quite sure the exact policy on that. Do we need to officially vote those people in, even if there's just one person running? Sorry, I believe I was Mike, Mike Will, and then Amelia, and then, Amelia, and so then Matt. 
Yes. So to make it for the record, we do have to officially vote them in. Um, so the two was budget committee technically, uh, and um, up back technically up back. as well. And then the other one was yeah. FAB. Faculty and staff oh, senate. Yeah, mm -hmm. really there was a couple other ones. I feel like. Yes, I think. Mm -hmm. I know Armando had the list. You know, if he can send us over a copy of that, so we know exactly who signed up for which committees. He's out sick, but right. yeah, I mean, so that might. Yeah, we'll have to. We can look. always table it till the next yeah, meeting as next well week. to officially. Decide I've just those. been asked about the university budget <laughs> one, so because they're already starting to meet, so that's okay. why. If we uh, could do that one, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I was like, we got Will next on the list. So I'd like to motion for the voting of the budget chair. I second that. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. All in favor for Will's motion? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Objections. Abstentions. Any objections? Cool. What you had to um, race for? I do have a comment, but I believe Amelia was next, and then I'll go after her. <laughs> Might have been me. Uh, something that I would just like to add, I believe I did put my name on the list for budget, so I just wanted to cl clear up that mix-up. Yeah, so if I am remembering correctly. I believe you guys both put your name down and then you withdrew because you signed up for two other committees that nobody else was interested in doing. I cannot remember which committees those were. Um, that. I think you switched it to faculty. If I, if I can give a direct comment to that. Um, yeah, you did withdraw your name on the budget, but I remember that I had mentioned uh, up back because you had mentioned something about like the emergency fund and how you wanted to advocate for more funds into that and see how the university is yeah. using their funds. So, yeah. You think we should also do a motion to do the up back just so that's official even though Dr. Brown said something about that. Yeah, uh, Siobhan. Oh, um, and I, I, I was the only one that, um, that said I wanted to be in the, um, the faculty and staff Senate. It was only me that, Sign up for that, yeah. Thank you, Siobhan. Okay. Matt, I have you in the queue still. So. Yeah, so I do have a kind of concern with that because I feel like I signed up for something. I don't know where that list went, and I think it would be nice to know kind of for me before even running for this position because I do want to respect the main question around is capacity. I believe Armando is the only one with that full copy of the list. The only list that he sent over to us is the same one that everybody got that is on the agenda. And that was just for people that signed up, that where multiple people signed up for the committee. So we don't have any of the ones where it was just one person that was interested. It is not. Okay. Mike? So here's my thoughts are we very motion to add the budget committee here. Let's finish off this agenda because we're running out of time here. And then next week we'll fill in those gaps. Um, yeah, I think we come to kind of a quick consensus on the sidelines. I but. think, Dr. Brown, did we also want a motion to vote on the up back officially since the meetings have already started for that? That's fine. Okay, we'll do that. So I'll motion I'll, the, the motion to add up back to this as well. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? And that was just you, Amelia, right? For up back? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Did you want to go for budget also still? We can add you back onto that. Think about it. We'll come back to it after we finish. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Matt. So we'll go ahead and give you your two minutes for your speech. If you Given still want to accept. information, I may want to decline at this time okay. for this position because I think there's a couple others I signed up for and I don't want to overburden myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's perfectly yep. fine. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you for communicating that. We'll go ahead and bring in Levi.
Uh, Levi, I just get you caught up. Um, there are a few other committees that we still need to vote on, which is the Upback Committee, um, the Budget Committee, and the Faculty and Staff. So in case you want to take that into consideration and withdraw your nomination for this, um, Matt withdrew his nomination because he has other committees that he uh, nominated for. So would you still like to continue with this? Yes. Cool. Then we'll go ahead and give you two minutes for your speech. And whenever you are ready. So, uh, good afternoon again. Uh, we're speaking again before you uh, to talk about the Shared Governance Committee. Um, the Shared Governance Committee is also an important committee for us. Um, as many of you know, that this campus is run by various entities on this AHEC, uh, the Prison's Office, us, and a couple other entities. And so, the representative from TSAC to go onto this committee will be will hold a lot of responsibility and it'll be important for them to have experience talking to um, people of this caliber uh, before and be experienced in working with them on uh, working on, uh, with them with issues and also uh, representing people. Um, as I mentioned previously, I was uh, part, I was the director of uh, public relations at PCC and I've worked before uh, for business trips, uh, working with high level donors, trustees for events. Um, throughout the year uh, down there at PCC. And so I believe I'd be a good representative uh, for the Shared Governance Committee. As I understand responsibilities and the heaviness that would uh, come with working with that type of environment. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Levi. Uh, if you could just step out so we can debrief real quick. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, questions. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> well, Will, do you have a question or not? Keep in mind, we're limited on time, so we're framed for now. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? No. All right. Yeah. If you can please step out so we can debrief real quick. So what are you guys' thoughts on Levi? Mike? I motion to skip this portion and go straight to voting. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Cool. Uh, Matt, if you can please bring in Levi. Oh, was that the vote? That was the motion to skip. Hold on, wait, Matt. Yeah, sorry. That was just the motion to skip the vote or skip the conversation. Get out of here. He pulled you in too soon. Sorry. I motion to uh, elect um, Levi to the Shared Governments Committee. Amelia. Susanna and Amelia second date. All right. Um, any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we'll go ahead and bring in Levi. Mike, since I'm running for the next committee, would you be comfortable timing? Since I'm running for the next committee, would you be comfortable timing? Thank you. Okay. Him. If he comes back, we'll go ahead and inform him. We're going to go ahead and start with the civic dialogue. Haley, would you still like to accept your nomination? I would. Will, would you still like to accept? I will humbly decline. Okay. And Amelia, would you still like to accept? I have a clarifying question. If I am not chair of this committee, can I still? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Levi. You got the chair. <laughs> congratulations, Levi. Uh, Amelia, to further address your question, uh, Stephen is taking on two people for this role. Um, so mm -hmm. with Will withdrawing, it would mean both of you and I would be on there as long as the council votes. So Okay. Then I will keep my... Cool. Well, then I motion that we skip the speeches and the voting for the sake of time. I second that motion. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Congratulations, Haley and Amelia. You guys got the civic dialogue support. No, I motion to skip the vote and the... Skip straight to the vote. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I will send Stephen a message about that, Amelia. Cool. And then since Mike, was it for the up back, right? Or since we need to have a vote on the up back, um, we just, yeah, and the budget committee. So we're going to start off with up back. Uh, Amelia, do you still want to hold your nomination for that? Yeah, cool. Is there anybody else that wants to do any self nominations for that? No. Cool. I mean, I motion that we skip the questions and the speech. And the vote. I second that. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cool. Congratulations, Amelia. <laughs> All right. Moving on to budget committee. Um, so we have me. I would still like to self, or I would still like to accept my nomination. Is there any other self nominations? Anybody else interested? I'm withdrawing my. Okay, officially do not want self nomination. To. Perfect. Mike? Just a point of clarification. So, this is one of the very specific committees we have. Um, in that case, um, just in terms of the people, you would, uh, Emil or Haley would be the, co the chair technically that sits on that committee. If you were to accept this nomination, you would act as the budget chair. She would act as the chair of the council for that committee. Just putting it out there. Oh, and um, one more thing. Um, once you fish elected to this, you have a timeline of three weeks to kind of create our budget with the chairs of the committee and appoint your vice chair. So just putting that there. Is it for two, two co-chairs or is it just for one chair of the budget committee? One for the budget committee. And then there's going to be a vice chair who is nominated by the chair. Appointed. No. Okay. Should I any other interest in nominations or any clarifying questions? Okay, I motion to skip the speeches and skip straight through the vote. I second that. Any objections or abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll have Alejandro officially as budget chair. All right, so moving on to our last one, faculty and staff chair. Um, I don't necessarily remember who had it. An official motion. Was it you? I don't know if we have an official motion to vote on that one, but. Sure. Faculty and staff. Well, is there anybody that would like to do any self nominations for faculty and staff? Chair. All right. Well, I motion that we skip or Dr. Brown? Yeah. Before we go on, I just don't know what this committee is. <laughs> and so I'm curious, do we do we know what this is? Did somebody come in and talk about this? Like I don't remember what is it faculty senate? Faculty okay, staff. not faculty staff. Um, I guess to be clear, while we can have a representative at faculty senate, it doesn't necessarily mean like the person is rep they're representing TSAC, but they're not going to be part of. It's not like president's cabinet. 
or any of those other more formalized roles of a TSAC representative. It would just be somebody going to the meetings and just observing and, and listening. So I just want to be clear that that would be the person who would be assigned then. That would be their role. It's a little bit different. So that's all. I just want to be clear on what the role is. So then for clarification, they just wouldn't be a voting member. They would just be going in attendance. Yeah, they would just be going in attendance and listening to whatever is happening in faculty senate and bringing it back. Siobhan, do you still accept your nomination with that being the case? Yes, I do. Cool. Well, then I motion that we skip the questions and the speech and the voting. I second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Cool. Well, congratulations, Siobhan. You got the position. Is there any other committee chairs that anybody can remember that they put their name down for that we want to bring to the table for this current meeting, or do we just want to table the rest of them for next meeting when we get the official list from Armando? I think we should wait for Armando's list. Personally, that way we're more informed when we're making these decisions. Yeah. So considering, oh, sorry, who, Mike and then Will. Um, for the sake of time, I motion that we, so this is a lot, we table our finalized goals because I think this is, now that we have the chairs in place, we can kind of determine our goals from our different things. So I motion that we table the goals to the next meeting. Does anybody second? I second that. Any objections? I, I do. I object. Will? Amelia also objects. Any other objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's two thirds. So we're sorry, Will and Amelia, but we're going to table this to next meeting. So we're all good then. Well, then I motion to end this meeting. Oh, snap, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to start off with committee updates. Uh, Board of Trustees. Um, so, Board of Trustees, we had, um, I don't think I got to finish this, we had um, two meetings over the summer, discussed a variety of topics. Um, the main thing on the priority for the Board of Trustees is the two um, bills that are currently circulating. Um, I forgot. I, the two propositions that will be voted on. Yeah, 180 and 50, thank you. Um, currently, the state legislator is legislation, there's a lot of drama in there, but they're currently trying to find a compromise. Um, so the board is, we released a statement highly against these bills because, I mean, just looking at the kind of projections from the congressional or the budget office of the state, um, it is a significant slash to higher education funding. Um, so we're kind of, that's the priority of the board currently. Um, secondly is we have our next meeting in, I think, uh, September, and then I have a retreat with them in October. So once we get closer to that meeting, the agenda gets announced, I will uh, bring it open to the full council, and um, I will take ideas on what to mention, what are, what's on our mind. So that's all I have for that, though. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Um, moving on to SACAP. So today was supposed to be our first meeting with SACAP, but it got canceled. Um, but one thing of note from it, I'm trying to find the specifics. Um, it sounded like it was canceled due to them having to deal with some other stuff about some racial signage around campus. Um, and I think Amelia had more information on that than I did because I was not aware of that situation to begin with. Sorry, that was extra and dramatic for no reason. Uh, basically, in the somewhere in the Denver community, um, somebody put up a very problematic, racist, yeah, um, signage at the bus stop, and it's um, there was some violent undertones of that signage, and so people, I guess, in the community are rallying to protect one another, decide what's going to be done about that. 
Will, you have a direct comment? Clarifying question. Is that on Auraria? Because I'm, I'm not. No, it's not, which was, I was a little confused as to why they canceled it for that, but mm -hmm. okay. it was not on Auraria to my knowledge. Thank but you. I can get back to you. Thank you. Victor? I guess one assumption could be just so it doesn't happen on campus. I think that's why they were doing this. So all the leaders in Auraria can get together and see what they can do to prevent that situation from happening on campus. Thank you, Matt, for that update. Moving on. Well, we just voted the accountability committee, but if there's anything you would like to say. Can I use this time just specifically for that then? I'm sure. Yeah. Um, again, thank you for um, electing me into this position, and I will do my up, utmost to uphold the Constitution and accountability through restorative justice for everyone, including myself. Cool, thank you for that, Will. Uh, moving on to budget committee. Uh, I did already create a quick draft of the budget for this year. Um, basically, just did the starting amount that we had last year and I just added the minimum expected surplus. So we will, I'll definitely be reaching out to the other chairs so we can start getting the rest of the budget finalized and that's that for budget or victor do you have somebody in mind for vice chair for that and if so how could somebody be i not at the moment not right now but i've that's something that we can do or i would have to nominate that right now wouldn't i mike mike would i have to nominate the vice chair for uh, for your budget committee? No, you just appoint them at your discretion. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out to them. Um, if anybody's interested, then feel free to reach out to me. Moving on to PR committee. Do you guys have anything you guys would like to say for that? Hello? Okay. At the moment, not really. I think me and Siobhan just need to discuss a strategy plan, how we want to plan out this semester, mm -hmm. and we could bring it up next meeting. Cool. Thank you. Um, sustainability Committee, again, do you have anything you would like to say? Um, if you guys have any ideas on how to make the campus more sustainable, please bring it up and let me know so we can uh, discuss it further, see what we can do about it. Mike? Um, so you would have known this if you gone if uh, SACAB was happening today, but um, yeah, the sustainable campus program. Um, SACAB has its own sustainability committee as well. Um, but the the people who would have gone to the meeting, this sustainable campus program, um, those are the people you would want to. I would highly encourage you meeting with. Cassie is the new director of that program as well. Um, she is one of the nicest people in this building. Um, my favorite AI employee by far. I think uh, her name's Cassie Cad Cadwallader. Um, I don't mind uh, introducing you. Um, you can go to that office. They're so nice over there. So, Thank you for that. Um, moving on to open floor announcements. Does anybody have any open floor announcements? I believe Matt, Will, and then Haley. I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, now that we have some of our committee chairs, um, I would like to see, as soon as we get some of the budget stuff going, uh, working with the PR committee to order school supplies. Uh, Will? So um, it was brought up to my attention that there is uh, another committee that we need to appoint to student, to TSAC members, excuse me. Um, it's called the Grade Review Committee. And essentially, you get with um, different staff and faculty. I think it's faculty, actually. And if students bring an appeal of their grade, whatever that might be, you review the appeal, all the evidence for why that student brought that to that uh, committee. And you either approve the appeal so it goes to be voted on later on, or you reject the appeal. So. Um, just something to think about because there are students that will come to you with their appeals for um, their courses, their grades, right? And it's uh, it's a very important task as a student to get that perspective on that committee. I was on that committee last year with uh, 
Gabriel Trujillo. So. Cool. Yeah, we'll definitely um, vote on that next uh, meeting. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, faculty and staff senate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Haley had something. Uh, real quick, uh, Dr. Simpkins reached out to Alejandro and I to meet further about the housing plan and the other topics that he talked about at our last meeting. So if you guys could just send us any updates that you got from interacting with students and getting their opinions on that matter, uh, we would really appreciate to get the full council's opinion on that, including the students that you talk to. Um, if you guys just want to email that to me and Alejandro directly, um, I'll just throw it all into like a little document for us to bring to that meeting, which would be really helpful. Thank you. Any other open floor announcements? Cool. We got four minutes left. So moving on to faculty and staff. And is there anything that you would like to say for that? Just. Not at this moment. When I um, get informed with um, with the information, then I would have something for the next meeting. Thank you. Um, any advisor updates? Yes, um, I have a few. Uh, so a couple of important things. I met yesterday with, uh, who did I meet with? Joey, um, I can't remember his last name, but the president's executive assistant and Tui Fan, who's Dr. Simpkins executive assistant, Armando and I met with them yesterday to kind of go through calendars for the entire year to figure out cadence of meetings um, for both the president and Dr. Simpkins and um, the Dean of Students, Taylor, too, to figure out how their like, availability and when they'll be able to come to your meetings and all of those pieces. We also talked about every year we usually do a dinner um, with the president um, in the fall and then another one in the spring at the end of the year. And so we're looking at I don't know if we'll be able to do it in September, but potentially like early October. So I just want you all to know I'm probably going to be sending out a lot of calendar invites to hold times on your calendar as those dates get set. Um, I also met with Ed Brown about a month ago, and he would like to attend your meetings at least once a month on the first Friday of the month. That would be next Friday. Um, Ed Brown will be here as a representative from um, the president's office and um, if we can just give him a few minutes to give updates from senior leadership, he asked for that. So I wanted to put that out there and see if that's okay with you all. And then you can ask questions and he can take them back to the president. The president will also plan to be at your meetings at least once a semester, hopefully twice, but right now it's looking like once. And Dr. Simpkins will also plan to be here at least once a month is what it looks like right now. Still haven't figured out the Dean of Students, how he will be available or involved. So those are things that I'm trying to logistically make happen to make sure that there is communication and collaboration happening between senior leadership um, and you all. And then the other thing is space. Um, so I have been working with Mike over the, the summer and a vendor to figure out not only um, furniture that we're looking at ordering, um, but figuring out purchase orders and a lot of different things that we have to do with accounting to do that for the TSAC office. And so work orders have been put in. We're just waiting on some things. We're also looking at getting the shampoo, the carpets shampooed in your office because they're gross. Um, <laughs> and so just wanting you all to know those things are coming um, and it is taking a while. Um, but orders have been put in place um, to, or think processes have been started to make those things happen. And as, as we know more, I will make sure to let you all know. Um, and then lastly, um, real quick, Dr. Barone, I'm just going to jump in just because it's one o'clock. Oh, yeah. Uh, OK. I'm going to do a motion to extend this meeting by 10 minutes so that we can finish advisor updates and comments. I second. Sorry. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and so I talked about space, furniture order. Um, so we'll likely be doing some rearranging and cleaning. Did you have a question? Okay. Did you have a comment? Or... Okay. Do you want me to finish and then you all can respond? Okay. And then lastly, um, there was something else. Lastly. 
Haku. Um, so the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities is hosting their conference um, here in Denver, Colorado at the Gaylord Hotel um, this October, uh, or actually November. Um, and we are soliciting nominations for student leaders or student representatives to represent MSU Denver. We're playing a pretty big role um, in hosting a lot of events here on campus and in the community um, as a host institution for the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities as the biggest HSI in Colorado. So um, I will be potentially nominating some of you to potentially attend that conference. You will have all your expenses paid. And if you're interested in, and if you know of students, we're looking at sending about 20 students at least to that conference to represent MSU Denver. Um, so those are three big announcements. I will be there and so will Armando. Um, so that's all I got. Thank you. Will, I had you down first. Um, it was just to extend the meeting, so. So am I next? Hello, Dr. Brown. So um, this was a comment that was made to Armando earlier this week. Um, but so last, and at the end of last semester, um, an amendment was made to the Constitution to shorten the amount of council members and uh, raise the stipends from what they were previous, last previous two years. Um, that was unanimously passed. It's in our Constitution, but that number was not changed in this recent stipend cycle. I will work with accounting and HR and Armando to get that figured out, and we'll try to figure out what to do for the next this next stipend for September. Brilliant. Thank you. Siobhan? Thank you, Mike, for bringing that up to our, our awareness, because I did not know that. Wow. Cool. Well, then, if that is basically the end of the entire uh, announcements and updates, so I motion that we end this meeting. I second that motion. Second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cool. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>